I wanted to continue talking about JWST and the Big Bang because JWST's high redshift galaxies are ultimately going to disprove the Big Bang. And so far they've been galaxy identified at Z13 and they've been tentatively identified galaxies at 16 to 19 that will eventually be identified once you get enough data, uh, spectroscopic data in particular. And so it's made it very clear that in the Big Bang model that galaxies form 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang, which is sooner than astronomers had predicted that big galaxies would form. These are large galaxies and supermassive black holes. And that means that stars had to form as early as 200 million years after the Big Bang in that model. And so everything had to happen very quickly. Now there's lots of problems with this. And the first, I always like to go back to, it means that all the matter had to expand to greater than 13 billion years before star formation even started. And that means 70 times the speed of light if it's just average over that 200 million years, but it could, could have been a lot faster in an inflationary period, as the theory says. But matter doesn't move 70 times the speed of light. It doesn't. And then you have to include the factor that since the 200 year point, 200 million year point, that it had to expand out to 93 billion year diameter from 28, which is still more than twice the speed of light that's required for that to happen. So under the theory, everything's still expanding faster than light. But what isn't explained is if all the matter is moving away at faster than light and causing matter to be constantly expanding at a very high rate, gravity is not strong enough to cause stars to form. So galaxies and stars and black holes could never have formed in this rapidly expanding universe that is expanding somehow faster than light and then somehow gravity is opposes faster than light. And they'll say that gravity works in the more dense regions and doesn't work in the less dense regions while the Big Bang says everything's supposed to be homogeneous and the same density. So that makes absolutely no sense, even if it made sense at all. So that gives you just the first big piece of the cognitive dissonance of any Big Bang believer. And then something else I'd like to consider is the mechanics of spiral galaxies. And we're pretty convinced that at least some of these are large spiral galaxies. Uh, and probably when the ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, gets some spectroscopic data on the width of the redshift, we'll know that it's rotating and we'll know about how fast and we'll know how large the galaxies have to be at a minimum. And so that date is coming. But our galaxy, the Milky Way, takes about 200 million years to complete one cycle. And if you look at how long would it take a spiral to form, because a spiral doesn't keep winding up every cycle, it reaches a stable point where V squared over R is fairly constant then you have a problem where it's going to take several revolutions to reach that stability if you're starting from just a flat disk. Three, five, ten. It depends on the model that you use. And we don't even know and understand all the forces involved because of the so-called dark matter problem. So a galaxy like the Milky Way may have to be over a billion years old for the mature spirals to form. And some galaxies can take even longer to rotate, the hundreds of millions of years longer. So it could be billions of years for a mature spiral galaxy to form, just the mechanisms in order to produce the spiral. And we already have identified galaxies over 13 billion years old that are the size 
roughly, or mass roughly, of our galaxy between 10 to the 10th and 10 to the 11 stars, 10 billion to 100 billion stars. And so we know they exist. And the problem that people say is that they will admit is that we have a problem because we think these large galaxies are formed by collisions. But there isn't enough time for collisions to happen and for the galaxies to form. And supermassive black holes are the same. These large galaxies should have supermassive black holes in them. And some of the objects we're seeing may be even larger supermassive black holes with enough matter around it that they're producing light that's bright enough for us to see. So essentially, uh, very large galaxies that's collapsed into a super black hole. So, these objects take time to develop. Think about having a collision every 100 million years and then another 100 million years and another one and, and taking 10 or more collisions to build up that kind of mass. Of course, the Big Bangers are going to say, okay, the galaxies formed all at one time and, and we don't need multiple collisions anymore. That's probably what they're going to say. And then you have to add on that if you're talking about a spiral galaxy, that it's going to take another billion years after a collision for it to look like a spiral that didn't just have a collision just happen. So we're looking at ancient spiral galaxies, most likely, that are many billions of years old. Actually, the age of the Milky Way or more is what I expect. If they're the size of the Milky Way and act like the Milky Way, they're probably that old. But one way we will know how old it is, is does it have oxygen in it? Does it have higher metal content in it? And that's going to require more spectroscopy. We already know that one of the galaxies, I think it's GZH2 at, G, at Z equals 12, has been identified to have oxygen already. So that means that it has second generation stars already at when it's a little over 300 million years old. So Big Bangers will say we have supermassive stars that formed very rapidly and lived and died and spread their oxygen into the universe so that we get an oxygen signature. So these stars somehow lasted only 50 million years or less in order for there to be enough time for the oxygen to get distributed through a galaxy like this. And of course as we get closer to Z equals 20 or even beyond with some of these ancient galaxies we'll have even more problems of how do you fit in a galaxy formation in this little time. And the thing is, you can't. It's just, it's just not possible. Any, anyone who's reasonable understands that these galaxies couldn't form even if, even if they can come up with enough ways of twisting the astrophysical theories of star formation and galaxy formation. They're still not going to get the answer that they want. So they, they should just realize it now. And then there's another problem I like to think about, and that's the Earth-centric problem. Is so far, we've only looked at one main point, and, and maybe they're pointing at other areas. But eventually, we're going to look at a lot of different places, a lot of different directions. And I expect that we're going to see high redshift galaxies in every direction, and which will put the Earth in the center of the universe, which isn't true. In general, if you have a theory that requires the Earth be the center of the universe, then you have a crackpot theory. The Earth's not in the center. We're in some random place, but not in the center. So you have to come up with a theory where you get high redshift galaxies about the same redshift in all directions without us being in the center. That's what a good theory does. So month by month things are getting worse for the Big Bangers as more data pours in from JWST and it's going to continue to get worse over the coming years. And 
eventually we're going to see more of them jump ship and more and more and more because none of this makes any sense especially if you go back with the faster than light expansion issue so i think it's over it's just people are who are believers are hanging on they still want to believe and it's just going to take a while for them to stop believing well i hope you enjoyed this video and if you do please like it share it and remember to subscribe it helps build my channel and i want to say that i do have some books for sale if you're interested in my work in quantum field theory and particle theory and I appreciate my donors on Patreon and PayPal, as always. So thanks for watching.